Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews. It's still a mess around. I haven't finished the building in that yet, but got to get on with the videos. And of course, summer here in the Southern Hemisphere. So FPV is one of the things we're looking at over the next few months. And a question I get asked a lot is, how do I get more range out of my RC gear when I'm flying FPV? Now, it's easy enough to improve the range of your video gear. You can use high gain antennas where you can run more power. And that will basically extend your video range right out. I've heard of uh, 5.8 gigahertz systems working at ranges of 60 kilometers or something, ridiculous ranges, because when you set them up properly, they just work. Excuse the changing light. Um, there's clouds going over today. But say you've got your little Turnergy radio or your whatever, your JR or your Futaba radio. How are you going to make this reach as far as the video link? If you've got a helical setup and a, and a properly tuned link, you might be getting just say 10 kilometers, which in the old money, I'd know it's about six and a half miles or something. So how are you going to get your radio gear to reach that far? Because a standard, most of these 2.4 gig radio systems, they're good for about, depending on how much noise is around, one and a half to three kilometers of range. Now, I fly the free sky regularly out to two and a half K, no real problems. Fail safe might start kicking in at about the two and a half, two and three quarter kilometer range. But if you hold the transmitter right, you know, you just keep going. If you've got return to launch, of course, you know when the failsafe kicks in because it starts to try and turn around. And if you're gonna fly at the limits of RC range, you really do need to have return to launch. Otherwise you will lose a model because if suddenly someone turns on a router, a, you know, Wi-Fi router that's close to your model, you're flying over a house or near a house and a, they turn their Wi-Fi router on or pick up a cordless phone, it might create so much noise that you're RC signal, which is already just on the edge, is lost, and then your plane will fall out of the sky. So, return to launch is essential, but don't fly over houses. That reduces the risk again. So, how can you do it? Well, the simplest way is as with the video systems. Put a high gain antenna on your transmitter. Now, that's pretty simple with most radios because most of them have a screw in antenna. Certainly, if you're running the modules from FreeSky or uh, other module based systems, most of them have a little antenna like this that just screws onto the module. And what you can do, this is what they call a two decibel antenna. So it has a gain of two decibels over something that was a gain of zero. How about that? Uh, you could use something like this. Now this is a five decibel antenna. So it has, or effectively is the same as doubling the power of your transmitter because it's three decibels more than this one. So most of these transmitters run about 60 milliwatts. And so this is like running a 120 milliwatt transmitter. So that's a cheap and easy way. These are about, you know, three or four dollars. So that will give you more range. But be careful because, as I mentioned in the video on how high gain antennas work, this antenna, the little short one, produces a sort of a big bubble. It's a little bit squashed. So it's like a balloon that's been slightly squashed. So it reaches out in all directions. That's why you can actually point your transmitter antenna at the plane and you won't lose control um, if you're within visual range. Because that, although the radiation at the end of this antenna is reduced somewhat, it's still plenty enough. However, when you go to one like this, instead of having this sort of spherical shape, you've now got something that's far more like a donut. There's not so much energy coming out the end of this antenna. So if you point your transmitter at the model like this, then you may lose control until you reorient the transmitter. So when you're flying with a high gain antenna, you have to remember to hold your transmitter vertically. So this antenna is always vertical. So you're working in the area of highest gain. But as I say, that will give you the same as doubling your power, which will give you about 1.4 times is, well, you know, the range will be increased by about 40% with one of these. So if you're currently flying out to two kilometers, you'll get to 2.8. That's worthwhile for three or four dollars, isn't it? That's a, it's a really worthwhile option. If you've got a transmitter that takes a screw-in antenna. If you don't have a screw-in antenna on your transmitter, then it may not be the option for you. But the only other way you're gonna get more range is to have more power. And, well, actually there's two other ways. The first way is to have more power. And so you can get one of these. Now this is, inside this box here, this is a power booster. It's actually really heavy because it's got a lot of metal in there. This will boost the output of your transmitter from its 60 milliwatts to two watts. And that's a very significant increase. And I've heard of people flying with these out to 10 kilometers or so quite easily, just using the standard antennas and uh, plugging this in. So basically what happens is you remove your aerial, comes with a little cable that plugs in between the between your transmitter and your so this plugs in where your aerial used to go and this then 
amplifies the signal and it even has its own little antenna but you can use one of these as well providing it's got the same type because there's two types of connectors there's SMA and reverse polarity SMA so you're going to make sure that, there's, that they match you can put your antenna on here like so and then you could mount this on the back of your radio and it needs a power supply it needs about a 9 volt supply I think to make it run that can come from your battery inside your transmitter or a separate battery that will give you an immediate boost in range but you've got to be very careful and this is quite important unless you're flying on your own this is going to produce a massive amount of extra range uh, extra power which appears as extra noise on the 2.4 gig band so you have to take into account the fact that other people will be using the band and if you start stomping all over them with a massive 2 watt transmitter they won't be happy so remember make sure that you're flying away from other flyers if you're going to use this, this booster on the back of your transmitter but these are quite cheap I got this one off eBay $65 or something it's not expensive not expensive it's more than the transmitter's worth but it's still not expensive and it gives you that significant extra range you don't have to worry then about holding your transmitter dead right because it's omnidirectional you can use the short antenna and it'll give you a big bubble you can fly anywhere around it without worrying too much about how your transmitter is being held now there is another way to increase the range of your FPV gear and that's to use a UHF system and this is one here and this is apparently one of the worst ones and I don't even know how to pronounce it it's R-M-I-L-E-C what is that? Rimlick. Rimlick. anyway I got this one bought this from Hobby King it was really cheap for a UHF system so I thought I'd give it a crack um, there's a receiver and there is a JR type transmitter module so with this if you've got a JR type transmitter I think they do Futaba ones as well if you've got a Turner G9X or if you've got oh it's sealed in a bag if you've got a Turner G9X or you've got a um, JR with a module then all you have to do is pull the module out the back and plug this in like you did with the FreeSky modules this runs on 433 megahertz I think so it's UHF and this will give you a lot more range even though uh, the power is only I think a watt or something maximum but lower frequencies travel further and they travel through things too they'll actually go over hills and through trees far better than your 2.4 so not only will you get more range but it'll be more consistent because when you fly behind a tree you won't lose your RC link you will lose your video link if you're on 5.8 so you've got to be a bit careful that you uh, you don't outfly your video link again once you get one of these and also four point, uh, the, or the UHF band the 433 megahertz band is full of interference just that every keychain alarm and every car alarm and door opener runs on this band so I've read a lot of reports of people flying along perfectly fine then all of a sudden no control and that may be because down below them there's something on the 433 megahertz band that's been turned on and although these are frequency hopping there's not a lot of space on the 433 meg band to hop so you're more likely to find yourself being obliterated by some other interfering device and these of course come with a receiver there's a here's, here's one in here I won't, I won't take it out just like just looks like an ordinary receiver but it has much longer antennas because it's and it comes with some plastic tubes for routing the antennas it has longer antennas because 432 megahertz is a lower frequency and therefore everything has to be bigger the antenna is like a telescopic one like your old 72 meg system everything has to be bigger with the UHF systems now I'm going to test this one that, that what I've heard to date is that this system is quite prone to interference and also it tends to interfere with other things because what you've got to remember is with 2.4 we've been really lucky the problems with interference from things like um, e electric motors and um, spark ignition on our gas motors and even things like the electronics and cameras don't really affect 2.4 much because it's such a high frequency 433 UHF however is far more susceptible to things so if you've got one of those high definition cameras like a GoPro and that it might put out enough noise to upset the receiver on this because some of them are quite noisy in the UHF band I know that the very first uh, Horizon HD camera that what was it um, Foxtech put out I think that was actually quite noisy and it, when you ran one of these UHF systems you didn't get much range because the noise actually obliterated the transmitter signal so what I've got coming will be here in a few days is a new spectrum analyzer and that will enable me, enable me to look at all the noise that these things put out all the bits and pieces in your thing put out across the high, entire band from 100 kilohertz up to three and a half gigahertz so we'll have a look and see just how noisy some common RC components like HD video cameras are 
<coughs> excuse me, and we'll also look and see what, it, what the output of this is because another problem with these is they can interfere with things like your GPS and they can interfere with your video because some of the cheaper ones like the RMLEC, whatever it's called, may not have a filter on here to filter out the harmonic. So it transmits on 433, but it also transmits on 866 because the way these things work is they have amplifiers inside them to boost the power levels and they're really quite crap. So instead of just boosting the signal on the chosen frequency, they introduce harmonics that continue up the spectrum. So we'll check and see just how clean or dirty the RMLEC one is. And if I can get my hands on, I bought this because it was cheap, I'll probably get the open source one that Hobby King are also selling because it's cheap too. But if I can get my hands on a chain link or a drag or whatever, I'll put them through the same test. I suspect they'll fare much better than this or the open source one. And then of course we'll do some range testing fly away until the failsafe kicks in. And one of the reasons I bought this as well is because I'm waiting for the mountain down country to blow and I'll use a UHF system so that I can fly from a safe distance from the exploding volcano when I do my FPV reconnaissance of all the lava and smoke and fumes and EPO melting heat. So those are some basic um, guidelines on how you can improve the range of your RC gear for FPV. There are other ways. You can have directional antennas. We, I talked about having a higher gain antenna like this, and this is still relatively omnidirectional because it transmits evenly all the way around, not at the end though. But you can get antennas like the old TV antennas are called a Yagi beam where it's like a bar and it has lots of little elements all the way along. Now those can produce massive improvements in range, but just like our helical antenna for FPV, they're directional. So you've got to make sure they're pointed at the model and that's fine, but again you have a problem that if something goes wrong, if you've got a tracking system and something goes wrong, the telemetry is lost, then you may lose your model or it'll kick, it, if you've got return to launch, of course, it'll kick back and kick into return to launch and come back to you, but it still requires that you have the transmitter antenna always pointed directly at the model, and that's not always desirable, because it means you do have to have a tracking system if you want to come and fly around yourself or whatever. So the easiest ways are more power and a different frequency, and that'll give you more range. So some of these people claiming 50 kilometers range out of one of these, that's, that's a long, long way. And remember, that's a 100 kilometer round flight, so you need a model that's capable of flying that far on one set of batteries. And we'll look at that too, because I've got a couple, well, I've got three or four uh, FPV airframes now. What I want to do is go through and just compare them in efficiency. How far can you get on a watt of power with these FPV models? So what is their maximum range? And that's it for this video of the new FPV series, how to increase your, F, your RC range. Look for a full review of both these products coming up very shortly on the RC Model Reviews channel. And now I'm going to get back to painting, putting up walls, and doing all the other stuff that I should have done a long time ago so it doesn't interfere with producing videos. Comments on the bottom. If you like the video, thumbs up. Any questions on the bottom or on the RC Model Reviews forums, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.